Hey guys, Adam here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to powder coat an air tank on my 85C10. We're in the Eastwood studio. We actually have a bunch of projects lined up for this, but it's on air ride, so one of the first things we're gonna address is the air tank. It's been sitting outside for the last few years. UV rays have been beating it up, so it's all rusty. Just in need of some TLC, but we're gonna hit it with some green powder coat, kind of match the paint and spruce it up a bit. All right, so we got the air tank out of the truck. With a little bit of fighting, we managed to get all the fittings out. Well, almost all the fittings. Uh, this guy's pretty rusted in there and it was gonna end up back in anyway, so we're just gonna roll with it. The next thing we're gonna do is throw this into the blast cabinet. We're gonna use these plugs to protect the threads from all the media and make sure that none of that gets inside the tank. What's great about them is we can leave them in during the powder coating process. They'll protect the threads and they're not gonna melt. All right, so we finished stripping the tank. We used a combination of the media blaster and the SCT, a couple grinding wheels to get it done. Our next step is gonna to be to wipe this whole thing down with pre, get it in the booth for a pre-bake. All right, so we got powder in the gun. We're going with green. We have like 200 different colors you can choose from. This is pretty close to the body color, should look good. Okay, the tank's at about 220 on its way to 400 degrees. A couple more minutes and we can pull it out, start adding some powder. All right, so we got this out. It's sitting at a comfortable temperature. First thing you wanna do is make sure you ground directly to the workpiece. We'll show you how to cover that back up later on. Next thing you wanna do is start with your problem areas. There's this thing called Faraday cage effect. We wanna avoid that. So for us, that's our feet. We're gonna start there, then move on to the rest of the tank. We're working with the PCS250. It has two settings, a low voltage, 15,000 volts, and a high voltage, 25,000 volts. We're gonna start on the low voltage, and that'll help us avoid the Faraday cage effect. Then we can switch it to high if we need, keep on moving. All right, so we're pretty much covered. We did end up with some uh, Faraday cage effect around some of these bungs. What we found worked for us was bumping up to 25,000, raising the PSI on the gun a little bit, and moving further away. Uh, the big thing, you wanna make sure that your coverage stays pretty even. You don't want build up in areas. Next, we're gonna show you how to move this ground clamp. It's on the bottom, shouldn't really see it. So now we can just dump some powder on there, make sure it's covered, should be no problem. All right, so we check on the progress and open the door. It looks like it's starting to flow out, which is perfect. We can close the door and give it 20 more minutes on bake cycle. Okay. All right, so we got this thing off bake cycle and let it cool down, threw it in the truck for a quick mock-up. I'm very excited about the results. It's got a bunch of UV protection, should last for a long time to come. I'm gonna throw some fresh fittings in it and then we can move on to the next project. For more information about Hot Coat or any of the other products we sell, head over to Eastwood dot com.